Emily in Paris. It's a new Netflix show from the creator of Sex and the City, starring Lily Collins. And it's about a girl from the Midwest who lands a dream job at a marketing firm in Paris. This show is causing quite the stir on the internet. It's been out for less than a week and there have already been so many articles about it, so many reviews, and most of them are negative, including this one-star review from The Guardian, a lot of negative reviews from French publications, even a New York Times article, and on top of that, there have been a lot of people taken to Twitter uh, and saying negative things about the show. Yet, I've also seen a lot of Americans posting and asking, is this show accurate? Long story short, no, it's not. So I thought I'd make a little video about a few of the things Emily in Paris got wrong, as well as why the show is actually really culturally problematic. Did I enjoy the show? Yes. Was there great music? Yes. Was there great fashion? Questionable. But really, this show needs to be considered, like, extreme fantasy because this is just... Let's just get into it. For starters, I think the most glaring and obvious one is that this girl does not speak French. Like, not a single word of French. She can pronounce hello very poorly, but aside from that, no French. We learned from the very first episode that her supervisor is supposed to get this job, someone above her who got a master's in French. Surprise, she becomes pregnant and for some reason suddenly cannot take this dream job in Paris. Like, boom, second she gets pregnant, she drops everything. And who gets the job? A junior agent who speaks absolutely no French. This in itself, like the premise of the show does not make sense to me, but that is a whole nother story. I just find it really hard to believe there was no one else in that office that even spoke like conversational French. Not only does her character not know French, she shows very little desire to even learn the language. Yes, we see her once in a language course, a beginner's French language course. Aside from that, the entire season, she d still doesn't know any French. It doesn't even improve. From episode one to episode 10, she knows the same amount of French, which is nothing. When Emily arrives at the office, her boss discovers that she does not speak any French. Going to work in a country and not even speaking a little bit of the language is so rude. It's just really rude, it's really insensitive. But something else that really annoyed me in this show is that oftentimes Emily will be in a scene and there's two French characters talking to each other, or like let's say a French person is speaking to a French hotel clerk and they're speaking English. That wouldn't happen. I understand that apparently a lot of Americans have difficulty with subtitles. They hate subtitles. So I understand that an American show wants to minimize the amount of subtitles that they need. But that's just straight up unrealistic. The amount of French characters that are speaking English with each other. The next most glaring thing about this show is the negative stereotypes. I think like within the first episode, you're getting every single negative French stereotype thrown at you. To name just a few, everyone's rude, everyone's lazy, and doesn't show up to work on time, if ever. They don't shower. The French are stuck in tradition and will not consider new ideas. Everyone has extramarital affairs, and along those lines, everyone talks about sex all the time, even in the workplace, during important client meetings. Emily's boss is portrayed as one of the rudest characters. Um, first of all, if a French person really, really doesn't like you, they're probably going to be rude to you behind your back, not to your face. I mean, granted, I think this boss is a little justified in being just a little rude because she just received a very underqualified employee who does not speak the native language and is very rude to her. She does not start off on the right foot. She is constantly speaking over her. She's waltzing into her office without knocking. She's saying, hey girl to her boss. I mean, I've worked at BuzzFeed, which is an incredibly casual work environment, yet some of the stuff that Emily does is like wouldn't even be appropriate at BuzzFeed. That's how rude I think she is. The boss is not the only rude, negative person in this show. Even just random shopkeepers that Emily is coming into contact are incredibly rude and they won't speak English to her. Well, yeah, English is not the native language here. And all of these negative 
stereotypes that keep piling up every episode just further push what I think is the most problematic thing about this show, which is that Americans are right and the French are wrong. Emily is hired to quote unquote bring the American perspective to this agency. Every episode and every interaction she has at work basically is like, Emily's way is right, the American way is right, she just needs to convince the French people that it's the right thing, and then voila, all their problems are solved. I don't want to put any spoilers in this video, because I know some of you probably have not seen the show yet, but kind of the overall takeaway uh, I had was that Emily does not have a character arc. She doesn't change. She's pretty much the same person from episode 1 to episode 10. She's just had a, some fun sex and ate a lot of croissants and had good wine. Um, but other than that, there's no character arc. The people that change are the French people, because she is changing them. And the show kind of puts it as like, this is a positive change. You know, maybe it is. Uh, but it's just really, really problematic to me that they are setting up all the French people as these negative enemies, in a sense. And Emily is kind of the thin, pretty, beautiful, white American girl that comes in not speaking their language to save them with all these American ideas. There's just one small scene that I think sums up a lot of this. Uh, Emily is trying to unsuccessfully purchase roses because she's speaking English, uh, and the woman will not sell her the nice roses. This French girl, Camille, comes by, helps Emily get the good roses. Emily thanks her and is like, oh my god, everyone in France is so rude, but you're French and you're not rude, Camille. Like, what's the secret? <sighs> what does she say? Well, I grew up watching American television because thank God for American television, otherwise all the French would be rude and not speak English. In that same exact scene, there is one line that also acknowledges the other huge problem with this show. Uh, the lack of the metro. You never see the metro in this show. Emily never takes the metro. In that scene with Kenny, she mentions that she took the metro once and got very lost. As in like, I tried it once and then I never went back. How does this girl get around? You never even see her on one of those bikes that you can rent. No, she's just walking in a taxi, which is very expensive, or on a hot guy's motorized scooter. Those are her only three modes of transportation. This makes me think that she lives very, very close to her office, lucky her, that she can walk from her nice apartment to her office in very work inappropriate stilettos. That's how close she lives. So other than that, I don't know how she's getting around Paris, honestly, because pretending like you can live in Paris without taking the metro or renting one of those bikes is a stretch. Also, let's just talk about her apartment real quick. The property manager, who of course hits on her because everyone hits on her, says that this apartment is a chambre de bon. Um, that's not a chambre de bon. A chambre de bon is like a maid's quarter. Uh, so it's usually in the top floor of buildings in Paris, and it's significantly smaller because it was for the maids. So it's usually one room with a separate bathroom. Her apartment is <laughs> not one room. It's not really tiny. That is a nice apartment. Anyway, okay. Last thing I want to talk about is essentially how easy everything is for Emily. I think her Instagram is a really good example of this. She arrives in Paris with 48 Instagram followers. Somehow, through organic engagement and uh, half-assed hashtags, she quickly gets to 20k. She gets to influencer status. That in itself is just so unrealistic. She's also taking pictures of people without their permission and posting it. Like, if she's working in marketing and social media, you should know that that's not okay. But this is in line with the whole rest of the show. Every man that Emily meets falls head over heels in love with her. It doesn't matter if they're married, if they have a really hot, nice French girlfriend, it just everyone, everyone falls in love with this girl. She has like so many men to choose from. Emily kind of has this motto of fake it till you make it. And uh, 
it works for her. I really think that this is just part of the overall problem with the show of this idea that the American way is the right way, that she can just show up this like young, thin, pretty American girl and all her ideas are right, all the doors will open for her, all the men will fall in love with her, she doesn't have to learn French, she doesn't have to consider the cultural differences between a French and American office, she doesn't have to change at all. Maybe that's a fantasy for a lot of Americans, maybe they dream of going to another country, always being right, not having learned another language, but that's just not true. I was really excited when I first heard about this show. I was like, alright, Lily Collins, in Paris, some questionable fashion, yes, I'm down, sign me up. I'm not saying that this show is not fun to watch. What I'm saying is that you should not take this as reality. This is a fantasy, this is a rom-com, this is a alternate world. It's really shows like this that perpetuate negative cultural stereotypes. It also gives Americans the sense that they are superior to other cultures, that they can travel to a country without speaking the language and assume people will accommodate them. If there's a season two, I think there is gonna be a season two, I'm gonna watch it, okay? I, It's fun to watch, but I think that the show had the opportunity to educate Americans about French culture, about the French way of life, and it didn't really. Like, there were a few times, I will give them this, that they tried to insert little like tidbits of knowledge, um, like the fact that in France, what we would call the second floor is their first floor. Also like faux pas that English speakers sometimes make when speaking French, like saying, je suis excité, don't say that. Or um, preservatives is not jam, it's condoms. Um, little things like that um, are helpful, yes, but on the whole, this show is really inaccurate and has a lot of negative stereotypes. I would be really curious if they listen to all of these negative reviews and change anything for season two, but I don't really have high hopes. We'll see. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more. Also, in the comments, let me know what did you think of Emily in Paris? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are there other things that they got wrong that they got right? Let me know, I'm really curious. That's all for now. Ciao, au revoir, bisous.